Right, in the previous how-to video, we discussed the procedure of inserting the vertical curve IPs within a, a design, which we have down here shown on uh, the bottom panel of our screen. So as we said before, here's a plan view of our job. To the right-hand side, we have our cross-section view, and down the bottom here, we have our profile view. So this exercise here is going to be discussing building and applying templates. So to build and apply templates, you've got to select design at the top there. And on the left hand side there, we have templates, super elevation, create super tables, and uh, other methods of actually creating like compound side slopes, selecting the templates, super table selection, and so forth. And also we have subgrade selections for putting in subgrades to the actual job. And also side slopes, that is the batters. So we can apply side slopes, fixed slope batters, uh, ditches, which is the water tables or water channels, and any shoulder extensions. And on the right hand side here, we have the compute design for when we bring it all together. So under library, you can actually store or create templates and store them to the library. So if I go into library templates, I have various ones in here for different uh, different scenarios. I've got a 10 metre road, I've got one here for a 7 metre road, I've got one here for um, 8 metre with 4 metre shoulders, uh, and also here um, one for different curbs or mountable curbs, and, and uh, so you can apply these or create these in your library and use them to insert within different jobs, but depending on the scenario. Okay, so if we go now back to templates, and we'll go to a new template, or it could be called, um, oh, no, hang on a sec, we're not in library, I'm going to design. Design templates, and we go new. And in here, it will be just called, um, we'll just change the template name to DES1. And it has the sort of the, the view of when you actually start creating or building your template or display those legs or sections on screen. So at the bottom here, we have a left and a right. Imagine that center bit is the center line of the road. And so this is the left-hand side of the road and the right-hand side of the road. You don't have to put entries in both the left and the right. You can either place it in the right hand side or the left hand side and there's options on the on the on these buttons on the side here to copy to left or copy to right. Also what we have is options here to copy from library or copy to library as I was saying before. If you create a, um, a template that could be used in various other jobs, I would suggest you copy it to library under a, a, a special names based on the, what the template looks like, and then you can copy from library in another job. So what we're going to do is put in a horizontal distance. This is each one of these um, numbers down here is a leg. One leg is attached to the previous leg. So if I enter something in here, and leg two, I enter values in here, it will attach to the previous leg, which is leg one. So if I put in a, a horizontal distance of say five meters, you can either do a vertical distance down or enter in a slope. In this case, I'm going to put in a slope, minus 3%. And you enter a label. Now, you define the label by prefixing the actual uh, designated entry of the actual label point with either L or R, depending on where you are. If I was on the right-hand side, the, the first letter I'd be inputting would be R. See, I'm on the left. I put an L and go left, say, edge of seal. And we're going to plot it. Then we might put in a shoulder and we go, say, 2 metres minus 25% and go F L C H for C H sorry, S H for the shoulder and L preceded by L for the left, so left hand side. So we've got the left-hand side entries in, so all you do is go copy to right, and it prefixes the edge of seal and the shoulder with R, the letter R. 
That means that the strings then, when they transfer through to survey view, anything with the letter L or will, will, will join up automatically. Left edge of seals will automatically join up with points labeled left edge of seal and same with left shoulders. Then you, then you don't end up with crossing um, lines going from one side to the other. So go OK to that. Now we've created that template. Now I can go to a selection of that template. Go to start chain as well as zero. And we've got a, a template in there called DES1. So I select that DES1, which I've just created. Go OK to that screen. Now it will display that template design template based on what we have in the red hot button there for cross-section view. So uh, you, every time you go into roads, you've got to go into the red hot button there to select, select your, um, set up your alignment, what you want to display in, in alignment view, the profile view, as we did before, um, setting up what we want to, to see or use. And then in the cross-section view, I'm going to be display point info. It's going to show the code, displaying a point mark, Text size is normal, and it displays a cross slope and percentage, and I've ticked this option here, automatically recompute design if I do any changes. And you can display a road reserve, that is if there is a road reserve that's running parallel with the centre line. In my vertical exaggeration, you can change that to, to either 1, or leave it at 1, which is the default, or change it to 2 if you want to exaggerate it a little bit more. Go OK to that. So what you do is when you zoom in, you'll see the green, which happens to be the natural, the red, which is the design up here on the properties bar, is displaying the template, which we entered in the templates option, and it's showing the left shoulder, left edge of seal, the seal is a centre line or your alignment, right edge of seal and right shoulder with the, the, the grades of each one of those legs. So that's basically put it in for a straight situation, but we have a curve in there. So what you need to do is, is uh, for applying the templates for the curve, curve, you go to create super table, and it recognises what the horizontal IP is back in survey view for my um, vertical, for my horizontal curve, and because you've got we've created a template. It recognises what the cross slope is and the left width. That is for leg one only. So leg one is specified as five metres as we entered and it's same on the right hand side. The speed has been extracted from survey view, same as the radius, the super and the calculated super development. So because we only got one curve and it's a plain curve, we're going to be just putting a development ratio. We can either set it at 50-50 or 70-30, so we'll just leave it at 70-30 and uh, run that out. So curve type is normal at both ends because there's no uh, reverse curve or, or anything like that, another curve to come in at that is within the design. So I'll just go OK to that screen and it automatically generates the super, ta super table screen with the um, labels displayed down there the, the starter super and with the control line, the width being five metres, the cross slopes and the development of the curve on the left and right hand side legs. I won't go into too much detail about what the labels mean and the, the, the starter super is, but basically the starter super is where it changes from a standard template and the curve starts to form from that or the development of the curve. Um, template starts from that position. Go OK. And if we go to super table selection, the SS value, which shows it as zero, will start at 80, change 82.777, which will be curve one. Go OK. So if I compute my design, and what we do is seeing at the moment, we're at change zero, as you can see there. And on this properties bar to the right hand side of the change zero, there is a next button which we can then go through the design and just see how it's basically sitting. 
Now it's applying, as you can see, as you're clicking on each one of those buttons there, it's applying the super elevation to your design as it gets right into the middle of the curve. And then as you go further on, the development starts leading out to back to the normal straight situation to the end of the job. So as I alluded to in the uh, creating, um, uh, inserting profile IPs, it's not until you actually got your template and uh, put your batters on or side slopes that you can actually adjust the profile to get a balance and cut and fills. So at this stage, we've got our design template, but we've got no um, side slopes or batters. So we go to side slopes. Start change will be zero. So we go left cut two, right fill two. That's two to one ratio. Go OK. It's now applied the batters to that. So if I compute my design again, and then it has now displayed a completed template for the design surface. We will now just, uh, in this particular exercise here, apply a subgrade surface. So what you do is click on the cross-section panel area and it displays cross-section on the menu bar there. And under surface, you have options to add a surface, sequence or delete a surface. So if we go to add a surface, and the surface type is shown as subgrade, type over the word boxing and call it, say, base. Go OK. Now it's created that base surface. So what you do is go to base, change that color to something a little bit brighter to easier to see. And that is the base surface. Now at this stage we haven't applied any depths to that particular surface. So I might add another one, add another surface and call this one um, sub-base. Okay. And sub-base will change the color again to something um, different. Pink. So now we have two different uh, sub-base material, which was sub-base, uh, which is base and sub-base. So I go back to my design surface. Now what we have to do to actually create these uh, sub-base surfaces, under design there's an option there called sub-grade selection to go pavement parameters. And I'll pick base, which is the top surface, which we'll start changes is zero. The thickness we're going to be applying is say 0.15. The code is where it goes, extends out to, running parallel to the, the design surface. So you pick the first leg point, which is left edge of seal. In end mode, because it's a rule, it will extend out and continue on at the same grade and intersect with the shoulder. If it was urban, it will then vertically go up at the left edge of seal point. So we'll select rule and the code on the right hand side is RES and end mode is set as rule as well. Go OK. And you'll see over here it has now created that subgrade surface. I'll go back to pavement parameters game because we had another one as well which is called sub base. Change to zero and we'll make the thickness by 0.15 again. Left edge of seal. End mode is, ru is rule. Right edge of seal. End mode is rule. Go OK. And there we are. It has applied 300 mils of um, sub, sub base surface in there. Now, what we do is now compute our design. What I suggest you do, then do is then you need to compute volume. So we've, we've put an initial profile in here. We've got our completed design with our subgrade material. And when it does the computing of the volumes, if, the, if that was the um, finished surface, uh, for design surface, so to speak, in a fill situation, it would be, um, in a, sorry, in a cut situation, 
the cut will include the sub base material where the, that, that is the pink line. That's what it'll cut down to because that's going to be built up to that particular level. So what we do is go to compute volumes, we've got standard volumes, or we can do multiple subgrade volumes, and it's got the volumes for the complete design, and we go OK to that. And it comes up with a report that we've got a total cut of 6,900 meter, cubic metres and a total fill of 139. So we, that means we've got excess cut. So I'll close that report. And what we need to do is then adjust this IP to suit. So what we do is click on the profile area down here to bring up profile and go move IP. So we select the IP that we're going to move and adjust it up a bit just by I. Recompute our design. Go to cross section and on the side of cross section there there's volumes, compute volumes. Again we'll run through the process. We're bringing down the cut value a little bit now. We've got three and a half thousand cubic meters cut and 1,100 cubic metres of fill. So we're still a bit too much cut in here. So we close that one. And we need to adjust that a bit more. So what we do is click on the profile view, move IP, snap that IP there and drag it up a little bit more. Go to design, compute our design, go to cross-section view to bring up cross-section on the menu bar there, select compute volumes, go OK, and we're just slightly over now with fill, so what we need to do is just fine-tune that and adjust it down a bit more. So we've got, we've got too much uh, fill now, and uh, so we need to have a little bit of excess cut. So close that report. Zoom in here, and we're going to adjust this profile, move IP, just down a bit, just drop it a little bit, and go to design, compute design, cross section, compute volumes, ah, now we've got a total cut of 2,500 cubic metres and a total fill of just over 2,000 cubic metres. So basically we've got a net volume of 424 cubic metres of cut, excess cut. So that's close enough for me. So that's basically the end of the process of building and applying templates, plus uh, as well as um, how you put in subgrades and do your volume, quick volumes report. So that's the end of that process.